all stars are part of nature. But here's a question. Is the sun part of nature? Let's take a look. Well, I'm pretty sure that if there wasn't a sun, flowers wouldn't grow. So I think the sun is part of nature. Exactamundo, Tiny. Our sun is part of nature. And hold your beaks and toes. The sun is also a star, just like the other stars you see in the sky. Our sun is a star? Wow! <laughs> Learn something new tonight. Mr. the Conductor, why does the sun look so big if it's a star? Our sun looks bigger because it's the closest star to Earth. Other groups of stars are much further away. Oh, speaking of which, groups of stars have a special name. Constellation! Right, now, gaze upward. It's a star show. Some stars in the sky do seem to group together and make constellations, which are like, uh, connect the dots. In this case, we connect the stars to make pictures. What? Oh, I love this view. This is so cool. La la view. Hey, that constellation looks like a twinkling fish. Yes, in fact, Tiny, that's the constellation we call <laughs> the fish. That's like a dinosaur with a long neck. We troodons call it the sauropod. And this time of year, you can see it on most clear nights. The stars twinkle, but they don't seem to move around at all. I have a hypothesis. The stars in the sky are always in the same spot every night and don't ever move. Me too. Huh? Hmm. I can't find the fish constellation. It probably moved like the sauropod did. Where are you, sauropod? There you are. You did move. So I guess stars do move around, right? It may look like the stars have moved, but no! It's not the stars that are moving. It's the Earth that's moving. The stars! Yes, stars, I'm talking about you again. They just look like they're moving. The Earth is moving? Cousin, will you help me out and pretend to be the sun? Just stand still. Well, uh, okay. Good. You're Mr. Sun, and I am the Earth. I spin around, and at the same time, I, the Earth, slowly travel around the Sun. So, the creatures on Earth get to see different parts of the sky. Oh, so it only looks like the stars and constellations move. Right. Our sauropod constellation looks like it moved to a different place in the sky from earlier tonight. Ooh, the big pond, eh? Yeah, we're going on a camp out. And we're going to see the sunset and then rise in the morning. But we don't actually know where the sun goes when it sets or comes from when it rises. Observe. Our planet Earth is a big spinning ball that takes exactly one day to spin completely around. The Earth spins, so when the sun is lighting up one side and it's daytime... The other side of the Earth is dark. So it's nighttime there. Correct, Tiny. And here's a question for you nature trackers to think about during your camp out. Why is it colder at night? Hmm. I have a hypothesis. I think it's colder at night because the sun isn't out. It's on the other side of the Earth. Excellent hypothesis, buddy. Okay, follow me to Sunview Peak. To Sunview Peak! Okay, rule number one. Do not stare at the sun. It could hurt your eyes. You can peek and then look away. Now, the direction where the sun sets has a special name. It's called West. There goes the sun. Bye. Now it's twilight. Hey, how are the dragonfly? Hmm, he is flying and it's almost dark. Maybe dragonflies are crepuscular. I guess so. Bye, Howard. Hey, look, the sun is completely down and the moon is up. It's night. Brr. Buddy, your hypothesis was right. It's colder because the sun is down. So pretty soon the nocturnal animals should show up, right? Hey, there's one now. And look over there. And there, blue beetles. <sighs> I guess Dad's still asleep, but the glow beetles are still awake. 
We have to get to Sunrise Peak. Dad, it's almost time for sunrise. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> uh, sunrise. <laughs> wow, hope I didn't snore. <laughs> Ready to go, team. Wait, Don's asleep. Dawn, time to get up. Dawn, didn't you say over and over that you weren't going to sleep? Quite better. Uh, I wasn't sleeping. Uh, I was just um, uh, napping. Well, all right then. Sunview Peak, here we come. Okay, kids, where will the sun rise? In the west. But the Earth has been spinning all night. Maybe it'll come up behind us. Or maybe right out of the mountains. Take a look over there. The sun will be rising in the opposite direction from the west, a direction called east. The sun is up! Hooray! And it's already warmer up. Thanks, Mr. Sun. Get ready to see the daytimers again. Oh, good morning. Oh, time for me to get to sleep. Kids, don't run. <laughs> well, okay. Bitch, I find the shiniest one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Careful, hon! It's pretty empty in here, isn't it? Yep, just a few little scrub plants. But not all craters are barren and empty like this one. Some fill up with water and become crater lakes, and other craters have jungles growing in them. Look, this one is the shiniest so far. Is it a piece of asteroid? Hmm, shiny, your shiny find is indeed a fragment of the asteroid from outer space that created this crater. <laughs> Fragment? Yes. Uh, not sure. Quite possibly. Yes. That is. Ooh, nice one. Mom, are other asteroid rocks going to fall on us like that seed did at home? That will not happen, dear. I had the same concern when I was a Troodon tot, and Mother told me not to worry. Asteroids hardly ever hit the Earth. Mom and Mr. the Conductor are right. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds an asteroid would hit us? Okay, we're burning daylight. Time to find more shiny rocks. Come on. Well, I don't mean to brag, but rock? mine is obviously the shiniest. I oh, think oh, mine yes. actually mine is. Hmm. How about mine? Whoa! How amazing is this? sitting on the edge of a crater made by a rock from outer space. And Buddy's hypothesis was right. Something did fall all the way from outer space, and it made a huge hole. Was that my hypothesis? I forgot. Yep, another one of your excellent hypotheses, Buddy. My Buddy. I suppose we should be getting back. You are right, Mrs. P. All aboard the Zeppelin! It's a full moon tonight, Miss Tiny. And if you observe our moon through the Zeppelin's telescope, you'll see that the Earth isn't the only place that's been hit by asteroids. Craters! Lots of craters! Whoa! I wonder if there are any kid dinosaurs and pterosaurs that live in outer space. Maybe there's a moon dawn in a moon crater collecting rocks. With his brother, a moon T-Rex. I'll be Moon Tyrannodon Tiny, and I'm Moon Chimey. Wait, I'll be Moon Mom. And it's Mom's turn to look through the telescope, kids. Now move no, over. No, what? No, no, shut up. Shut up. Kids, take turns. Share the telescope. Oh, what fantastic kids you have, Mr. and Mrs. P. Mother, you invited us here? You were invited by a creative and daring new conductor, Trisha! Hello, I'm Trisha Troodon. Pleased to meet you. Oh. Trisha is one of my best young students at Dinosaur Train Conductor School. You guys are legends! I even have posters of you in my locomotive. <laughs> this is your train, Trisha? Sure is. I designed it myself. Do you like it? It's beautiful and shiny. Trisha, why is your train covered with all those, um... Boards with mirrors? Oh, actually, they're solar panels. You see, Trisha has discovered a whole new way to make trains move. <laughs> really? That's right. I call it my solar train. It's powered by the sun. The, the sun? sun? The sun? Yes, the sun. I don't understand. 
How can something be powered by the sun? Glad you asked, Miss Tiny. When something is powered by the sun's energy, it's called solar power. Our sun produces energy, which comes down to the Earth as sunlight. Animals store the warmth from the sunlight, and it gives them energy. Now, Trisha is apparently using that same energy to power her solar train. It's true. The solar panels on my solar train soak up the sun's energy, then use that energy to make the train zoom down the tracks. Except, even if Trisha's solar train does run, can it travel as fast and for as long as other trains, just on the power of the sun? That's why it's better to ride my rocket train. Uh, or... The dinosaur train! Gather around. Time for a Pteranodon team adventure. Adventure? What is it, Dad? Well, the conductor told me there's going to be a special event at the big pond tonight called a meteor shower. What's a shower? Is it like a waterfall? What's a meteor? I hope it's a kind of fish. <laughs> All good questions. And I know they can be answered by one very smart Troodon. The conductor! <laughs> Dinosaur train! <laughs> tickets, tickets, please! Well, hello, Pteranodon family! Hello, Mr. Conductor! Oh, headed to the big pond, eh? Yeah, we're gonna take a meteor shower, Mr. The Conductor. Oh, of course! We talked about seeing the meteor shower, right, Mr. and Mrs. P? <laughs> right. A meteor shower isn't the kind of shower you take, it's a shower you watch. But we have to wait till nighttime. Oh, that's why we're going at night? Exactly right, Tiny. Now, as we all know, the sky at night is full of stars, but there are also bits of rock and dust that float around in outer space. And they can be as small as a grain of sand and as big as a boulder. The Earth is surrounded by a blanket of gases called the atmosphere. When rocks from space are pulled into the atmosphere of the Earth, they get very hot, burning up as they zoom across the sky. That's when we call them meteors. Wow! But when do we get to see the shower? When we see a whole lot of meteors on the same night, we call them meteor showers. And that's what we'll see in the sky tonight. Lots of meteors falling, making trails of bright light. Yay! <laughs> Okey-dokey, I'm all set and ready for them fallen meteors. Let's see them. Okay, I'm ready. Let's see them. <gasps> Look! Hooray! The meteor shower! Oh. Oh. Jumping Jurassic! Now that is one spectacular shower of meteors. Hmm? Irma, what I've been wanting to say to you is... I like you very much, and I'm very happy that we become friends. Oh, that is so sweet. And you know what? I feel the exact same way about you. Hi, Irma. Hi, Mr. Conductor. Did you enjoy the meteor shower? When's the meteor shower over? Can we have fish switches on the way home? Sonny boy! Don't you have a dinosaur train to run? Hello, everyone. Irma and I did enjoy the meteor shower, Tiny. And it should last all night, Shiny. Oh, and Dawn, you will get your fish witches. <laughs> and Mother, you're right. I do have a dinosaur train to run. Dinosaur train. Once upon a time, there was a mom. Her name was Mrs. Pteranodon. Sitting on her nest, she heard a scratching and said, Oh, boy, my eggs are hatching. One by one, her kids popped.